Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with The Cube. We're in downtown San Francisco at the Hotel Nico. It's International Women's Day, March 8th. A lot of stuff happening all over the world. But we came here today because the center's got a great program put together, about 400 people, a number of panels on a number of topics. We're excited that they invited us to cover it, and we've got some really exciting guests. And our next guest is Sabine Ali. She's the founder and CEO of Angel Hacks. Sabine, welcome. Thank you. And uh, she's joined by Ellen McGirt, the senior editor of Fortune. Welcome. Thank you. So I think we all know what Fortune is. We do. But we don't probably all know what Angel Hack is. So Sabine, what is uh, Angel Hack? Give us kind of the, the sure. overview. Yeah, I'll give you the uh, eight second elevator pitch. We are an international hackathon organizing company. We travel the world and organize hackathons all over the world. And we uh, basically create a bridge between Silicon Valley and the rest of the world to bring entrepreneurs here and uh, give them the same opportunities that Silicon Valley entrepreneurs have. So do you do independent hackathons or do you do you like contract it? Because every conference we go to, we do like 100 conferences a year, always yeah. has some hackathon component. Do you help other people put on hackathons or you just do your own kind of independent? We do both, ones? actually. Do both. So we organize a 50-city global hackathon series, which is our own. And then we also work with corporate partners such as Accenture and HPE and others to organize hackathons for their brand. And is it is it thematic? Is it uh, is, is there you know a special thing about the hackathons that you guys do, and why you think that that's a, a interesting way to either develop talent, to deliver a message, deliver solutions? What's special about hackathons? Yeah, well, what I can tell you is what's special about hackathons is that it's a community space where people feel comfortable um, exploring themselves and exploring their talents, working with new individuals, um, and really. Uh, giving them an opportunity to learn new things and try new things. What's very different about AngelHack is we're actually the world's largest and most diverse developer ecosystem. So we actually have a wide range of um, diverse backgrounds and genders that come to our events. And we personally think that that's really where innovation happens when right. you bring uh, a variety of different backgrounds and minds together to get together and solve um, problems using technology. Can I just brag on you for a second? Because we just got off stage together where she just wowed the crowd with stories of these hackathons from around the world. And it's not just that there's diversity and it's not just that they've given them the tools to succeed. She's going to Kabul, she's going to San Diego. She's bringing people who ordinarily never get the attention, although plenty of people in San Diego get attention. I didn't name all the right cities. And she's bringing them together and then she's fine helping them fine tune and then she's bringing them to the attention of people with power. It is extraordinary. Thank you. And this is the sign of the time. Times. The right. innovation in the world, like things are starting to happen and, and our markets are opening up and, and Sabine is one of the people who's absolutely making it happen. And that's what Fortune does best. We we brag on the people that we write about. That's great. <laughs> and, and why do you think, Ellen, why are things changing now? It, it definitely feels like they are. It does. Um, but, you know, the cynic would say, yeah, we've heard all this before and, you know, pick your favorite time. Uh, of, no. and, you know, it's, it, yeah, it's not really different, you know, this this too will pass. Why is it different now? You know, and we were talking about this and I actually wish I knew and I'm a cynic too depending on where I am in my deadline cycle. So sometimes I'm super optimistic and sometimes I think it's just crazy. But I think it's the confluence of many, many things. We've had a lot of stories about injustice and lack of access from every possible sphere and race and age and country and religion, all of it. And we've had um, the very same tools, social media tools that are spreading things that are false are spreading things that are true. And people are legitimately finding each other. Right. And people are legitimately finding a, a tribe, for, for, for lack of a better term. And it's kind of exciting. So when you hear about things like Angel Hack, which I always are looking for these in my daily column, it can resonate with people who are not part of the ecosystem. And they can, they can absorb the lessons of inclusion and optimism and bring it to the rest right. of their lives. And plus, everything's crazy right now yeah, in the world. Yeah, I think it's really important to also point out that you know, in America, our political climate and certain personalities that are in power right now, there's certain topics and sub subject matters that are becoming um, everyday topics. Yeah. People are becoming a lot more comfortable talking about sexual harassment and talking about women in the workplace. And it's not like uh, a lot of the stories that women are telling are things that just happen yesterday. This right. is stuff that's from yeah. that's happened in the past that's now unlocked in their memories or they're feeling a lot more comfortable talking about it because we're actually creating an environment where people can talk about it and we're actually creating a language that people can use uh, to express their experiences and their emotions about it. You're absolutely right. So many places we could go. Um, 
it was, but it was interesting, you know, we're in kind of this rough middle ground, right? We haven't really kind of made this transition to where we're hoping to go. And it was an interesting comment on one of the other panels. You probably weren't in it. You are in your panel about, you know, the Me Too has actually scared some men away from being mentors. And somebody said, you know, there's less. And we covered the Grace Hopper celebration. And, you know, some of the numbers of women coming out of engineering programs, computer science specifically, are actually not going in, in the direction that you would think. And, and it's so, you know, we're still kind of in these chop, choppy waters, but I'm just wondering when you set up your hackathon, have you ever set up just not diverse teams to, sh to show that the output with a, re with a diverse team of opinions, points of view, backgrounds, race, sex, pick your favorite yeah. variable, actually deliver better results. Well, you know, there's a ton of scientific right, uh, right. Uh, research that actually shows that diverse groups and a diverse set of backgrounds des delivers better results. So group think, uh, you know, it's been proven right. to be very detrimental. At our events, we don't uh, form the teams. We let the community self-organize. And um, we've seen time and time again that we can actually never predict who the winning team is going to be and what the makeup of that team is going to look like. Yeah, you have to try this sometime. You got to put put them all in a little pot. And I don't even know. I don't even know. It doesn't even matter which salt, you know, single group you choose. You just know, as you said, the evidence is pretty clear. They're not going to perform yeah. as well as difference of opinions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and you're shaking your head. I know. I just sort of thought about like the sad little homogenous group who's sort of like set up to fail, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that maybe there's a kinder yeah. way to make the game. Like gummy bears or I something. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with all you've done at Angel Hack, where are you going next? What, what do you see as, as you look down the road? I still can't believe it's 2018. We're almost a quarter of the way through this this calendar year. What yeah. what what are some of your priorities if we come together a year from now? Um, what will you yeah, have, have Hopefully have a year from on? now we're, we would have expanded um, into more than 92 cities, um, into more remote regions than we have now. Um, and also we're doubling down on our accelerator. We want to make sure that our winning teams have an opportunity to uh, really come to Silicon Valley or get access to funding that's available in Silicon Valley so that they can have, they can have funding and they can be successful uh, for many years to come. And do and do you see within within you know some of the groups that don't have access obviously to the money and, and, and the location of Silicon Valley that people realize you know kind of what a powerful um, world changer technology can be and you know that you can actually write some code and, and deliver it to the entire world and people actually use your code to do something different. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're advocating for. That's really honestly what um, a lot of our topics discuss, that technology doesn't discriminate. Um, you know, it's really when people take a look at it and in fact uh, GitHub did some research that they put um, male uh, code that was written by men versus code that was written by women and then they had people rate it and immediately people were rating the code that was written by men higher and then they, you know, they didn't put what gender wrote it and then the code that was written by women was higher. So I think the research is starting and people are starting to realize to put technology first right. um, and gender, you know, maybe doesn't even belong in the, the yeah. judging criteria. Right. Here. And do you think oh, part of it's maybe just because we need more people? I mean, there's, yeah. you know, on one hand, autonomous everything is going to knock out all the jobs. On the other hand, check the job listing. Right. <laughs> we're, we're, we need a lot more people. We do. We do. And you're right. We're losing, what, 25% of jobs with new technology coming in. But we're also going to bring all kinds of people online who do not have access to even modern services, who are going to need some very basic things, and they're going to need access to markets. And then they're going to become more responsible consumers. And they, in turn, will then propose ideas that will make everybody's lives right. better. Because one of the things that we talked about is that innovation tends to happen in a bubble, and people are solving problems that they themselves are happening with right. themselves whole world will be improved by new levels of thinking and that would, create, would right. also create more jobs. And, it's, and they're new jobs, right? There wasn't such a thing yeah. as, as a software developer you know, 20 years ago. And, and, and if you're a buggy whip guy, it's probably not a great time to be a business today. So you know, while, the, while there are many jobs that are going to get wiped out, there's, a, there's new jobs. Yeah. You know, social media manager, I mean, that didn't exist, what, five years ago at most companies. Now it's a huge part of a lot of right. corporations. So it's this constant evolution in yin and yang. Constant so evolution. What are you looking forward to in 2018 as you kind of, you've got kind of a broad view of the landscape? I do. And I I write a daily column about race and culture, so that's just how we got a chance to meet. You know, diversity and inclusion has been sort of the thing I've been studying for the last two years. And as difficult as the world is and as crazy as it is, I really do see an opening that's happening when people are becoming more open to the idea of thinking different ways and embracing people who are different from themselves and not feeling threatened. Right. 
We're still in choppy waters, though. You're absolutely right. Well, and the other thing, too, right? I, I always... I was thinking, you know, if you're 100 miles from a coast in the United States, I won't speak for other countries because I don't know it as well, you know, there, there's, there's a point of view. And if you're more than 100 miles from the coast, maybe with Chicago as an island or Denver, there, there's a little bit of a difference. Are you seeing, you know, kind of it getting beyond, beyond those kind yeah. of short borders? Because obviously, as you said, a lot of social stuff going on right now. There's a lot of, of diametrically opposed views. And, and I blame actually technology for a lot of it because thanks to the recommendation engines, we tend to, yeah, we no. tend to get served up things that we've read in the past. So unlike where you had kind of one newspaper in town, everybody had to read it. So it had to be kind of down the middle. Now the, the silly algorithms will keep delivering stuff that supports sure. my point of view and other people will get delivered with their point of view. And I think the surprise after the election illustrated more than anything that people didn't know anything about the other side, right. uh, the shock. So are, are we getting past that? Do you see, you know, kind of what's your take on that? I'll start and then you jump in. I think that when we invest in communities that are underinvested in, wherever they are, I live in St. Louis, you will see innovations. And maybe you won't always see the innovations that you're hoping for that will knit society together. Um, but investment will flow and new product ideas will flow. And most importantly, to your point, an understanding of how the world actually works will flow. Alg the reason why to study um, software and code engineering is maybe that you don't want to be that. Maybe you want to be an opera singer, but it will make you a better, more informed citizen. It right. will make you better to understand what's real and what's not real. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of liberal arts education in technology because it helps you understand how people actually behave and what markets actually need. Right. So I think that as, as people have the tools and use the tools, investments will follow, lifestyle will follow. So I guess I'm just outing myself as an optimist here. Good. Well, that's good. Sabine, yeah. what do you think? And I, I have to be optimistic as well. Uh, again, being at the forefront of emerging technology, I know that there's people looking to solve that very problem. And they're coming from a diverse group of engineers. Uh, and I really feel like that we're going to come up with a lot of tech solutions that are going to make um, you know, a lot more of diversity inclusion uh, easier to facilitate and um, easier to implement in corporations as well. Well, keep up your good work. I mean, it's... it's at the end of the day, it's, it's about democratization. It's giving more people more access to the tools, and you're going to get better solutions, more solutions, more diverse solutions. So great job, and uh, thanks for taking a few minutes. Thank, Thank you. you so much. All right, I'm Jeff Frick. We're at the Accenture International Women's Day celebration. Thanks for watching.